Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of uh, Utility Lessons Learned with uh, Bill and myself here with Energy Central. We're so glad to have you. Today, we're going to talk about the death of paper. I think that people have figured out that paper is done. In fact, last week, I was speaking to a, a customer in the vegetation management in Australia, and she made the comment to me. She said, it's been a long slog to get off of paper in a very Australian way. And, you know, as we read industry press, we read a lot about the latest projects like self healing systems and many of these things are prototypes of high tech solutions to a modern grid. But I think it makes us think that everybody out there is working at level nine and trying to get to level 10. And in reality, many of the utilities that I've talked to, they're working on much more fundamental problems and many are still using uh, paper forms and paper maps. Bill, have you ever run into that? You know, I, have I ever? I always run into that. In fact, I was doing a, a story uh, like like two days ago, and, and they were talking about the challenge was that the paper was wrapping them up in knots. It was really, really a problem. But when I think of paper, I, I, you know, I think it's a, a solid cultural thing. I mean, it's so embedded in the work processes. So I'll give you an example. Back a, 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 a little while ago, I was, uh, I was head of engineering and we had to replace our SCADA system, our energy management system. We're, we're building a whole new building. So we're taking it one place and putting it somewhere else. And it was very delicate project. And, and, and part of that was the whole distribution dispatching where you just, the dispatchers just are, are, are uh, you know, looking at outages and crews and all that kind of stuff. Well, what they had was they had prints of the circuit, circuit maps, and they were printed out and they were mounted on metal plates, metal things. So they were really hard, so you could really hard move. And then they would put a mylar on top of it, like a transparency on top. They would take this, these uh, crayons and write up all the notes on top. And then it would file them in, in cabinets. So, well, we had a new SCADA system. So we needed to, so we weren't going to take those old crummy cabinets. They were around like 20, 30 years and they had, we got, how to buy new cabinets. Well, you know, you go online, just buy some new cabinets. The problem was these prints were an oddball size. They weren't 11 by 17 or ANSI E or they were just some odd size that they created back in the old days. So you think, well, now's a great opportunity to go digital, right? Let's get rid of all of those prints and those metal things and put in, you know, screens and computers. No, 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 no. The dispatchers, they didn't want to hear anything. So what we had to do because we couldn't order cabinets because they just didn't make them in that size. We had to actually have the cabinets, a whole stack of cabinets custom built in the brand new energy management system so they could fit the paper forms. Well, that just because it was cultural, this is how they would operate. It was safe. They knew how, I mean, it was so embedded in the culture to do it this way. So, uh, <laughs> Pat, how about you? You must have had some similar examples of this. Well, I did, and uh, you know, I'll just go to a more current example. I think the pandemic has compelled us to find new ways to work, and and we did that. It is more normal now. You, you know, one of the things that I do in my my spare time is I volunteer and help high school students with their homework, and I'm here to report that none of them dream of working for the local utility doing paperwork. They just expect everything to be done on their phone or their or their tablet. They check things, they initiate orders, they check the status of things, they provide feedback. These are all the kind of activities that our workforce does in the course of normal work. And I think people have realized that the paper is dead and there is a better way. Yeah. And going back to that story, uh, not, not the cabinet story, but the story that I had written for a customer about, about how they had transformed their operations. And they, in fact, had just got rid of the paper and they were they were doing other things now with it. But then when they realized that when they when they got rid of it, they put up a beautiful dashboard of all of the you know, they were they were they were doing like uh, uh, forms of collecting information about the system and where problems were. All of a sudden they realized, holy smoke, now once we get this data, now we can do analytics on it. We can uh, we can discover things that we didn't see before. So now now we can create uh, connections and predictions and 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 figure out how the shortest path of things. And so 
what, what I really want to talk about next time, or we are going to talk about next time, is this notion of insight. Is how, and even when you think about the digital twin, it's going to give us additional insight that perhaps we had never been able to think about. I mean, think about all those papers and all this stuff. You're not going to get insight. It's it's a barrier to, to collective insight for the organization. So next time we're going to talk about spatial analysis and insight. So thank you very much for listening and we'll see you next time.